Welcome to the e-commerce marketing podcast, the highly rated digital marketing podcast that provides weekly digital marketing tips and strategies from some of the world's top digital marketers and e-commerce entrepreneurs that will help you take your digital marketing to the next level. Sit back and enjoy this power packed episode hosted by Arlen Robinson, who is an e-commerce entrepreneur and digital marketing expert with over 20 years of experience. Hey, e-commerce marketing podcast listener. Are you looking to increase traffic and sales to your website? You can do this by launching your own affiliate program. Just visit getosi.com and sign up for a free trial today. That's getosi.com. Now get ready to hear from your e-commerce marketing expert of the week as they drill down to give you details on marketing strategies that can help grow your business. Welcome back to the e-commerce marketing podcast, everyone. My name is Arlen and I am your host. And today we have a very special guest, Adam Robinson, who is a serial entrepreneur and founder and CEO of retention.com, which helps uh, DTC brands grow their email list 10 to 15 times faster than any other way. He has bootstrapped the company uh, to 10 million ARR in three years and sold his last company to private equity for an eight figure exit. Adam is the host of the 10 years in the making podcast, which is uh, creating a weekly uh, work in public docu series called a billion dollar challenge and post daily on LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, Adam is an expert in email marketing, uh, list growth, data compliance, and building software companies. Welcome to the podcast, Adam. Thank you. I need to update that bio. We're at 21 million ARR now. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. <four> years. <laughs> okay, awesome. <laughs> I need, Good to I know. Need, I need, yeah, I need to update that bio. Well, okay. thanks for having me on the show, Arlen. Thank yeah, you thank much. you for joining us. Um, you know, this is uh, going to be a great conversation. Um, you're not a stranger to the show because you've been on before. Um, and I know before you, you really kind of uh, broke, it down, broke down some, some awesome um, stuff the last time. And so we're kind of excited to see what you're going to bring today. You know, we're, we're going to be kind of talking about something that I think a lot, a lot of businesses or marketers are, are that familiar with, but it, these types of changes are kind of creeping in. And, and basically, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, what Apple did with their iOS 17 update that's going to be limiting brands or that limits, limits brands from tracking users to just seven days, which is down from two years, which is quite a significant change. And you're going to be talking about ways that a brand can kind of navigate around um, not only that change, but other changes that we know are coming down the pike uh, that are kind of in that same vein with limiting tracking and, you know, kind of trying to be on the side of the consumer as far as tracking their activity, their data and things like that. So, um, you know, there's a lot of changes coming down the pike, but, um, you know, as a brand, you, you got to be able to shift with these things to be able to market properly. And, um, in this tech world, uh, you gotta be on it. Um, but you know, before we dive deep into that, why don't you tell us, uh, you know, a little bit more about your background and let us know a little bit about what you've been up to lately. I think the last time you were on the podcast, it was, uh, I want to say good, almost two, three years ago. So, um, I know a lot has changed on your end. So why don't you break it down for us? Yeah. And forgive me, my setup here just like crapped out. I got, no problem. um, Sorry about that. I got this, this, I'm really into looking good in podcasts. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing until it stops working. It's one of these setups, you know, (laughs) I got like an iPad in front of a teleprompter screen. Okay. I'm looking you straight in the face. Yep. Yep. Until the iPad turns off. (laughs) (laughs) That's technology for you. Like mid show. So, um, so yeah, I mean, my business retention.com, we help Shopify stores, our original product, basically help people grow their email lists. And then um, we started getting into audience expansion for basically abandoned carts, right? Like Mm -hmm. the core problem it was solving was those messages are only getting sent to people who are, the technical term is authenticated, but a way to think about it is logged in to a website, right? So that's still the case. What has happened, which we've built tech to sort of uh, fight against is Apple is making that logged in population shrink, (laughs) right? Like they're just making it go down. 
So the history of all of the wrongs in D2C e-commerce can, I think, start at, start at iOS 14. Mm -hmm. Everybody who's listening shit nodding their head, right? Like what that was, was that was like a, they were declaring war on cross website tracking, right? right? So it's like the third party cookie thing, all that, right? So iOS 17, Apple's been updating what's called intelligent tracking prevention. Mm -hmm. And their goal with this is to try to make everyone completely anonymous because that's their stance, right? Yeah. They, they, in their ads and all that stuff, it's like, and the problem with everyone being completely anonymous is that if someone is anonymous, then you can't do things like send them an abandoned cart email. Exactly. Because you don't know, there's, Clavio doesn't know who they are. Mm -hmm. A year ago, Clavio, this is getting kind of technical, but even if that user wasn't logged in, if they were just logged in the first time Clavio was able to track them, that mm -hmm. Clavio's pixel would last two years. Wow. So even if they weren't logged in, they kind of had a way to keep, you know, logging page view histories for product recommendation or like, you know, mm -hmm. send these abandoned carts out. Um, that's now down to seven days as of this April. Oh, wow. Wow. Which is big, right? And like the same that's thing's cute. happening to the meta pixel. It's just like a big difference. And like seven days is not zero, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like the text still works. But if you think about it in terms of you have this pool of identified users that whenever they return to your site, they are able to have retargeting communication because that's what this is right and that's what mm -hmm. that's what the most of the power of meta i mean meta there's two parts of it right one is sourcing originally the original traffic or whatever running traffic and then the other is retargeting right the retargeting yeah. part is what we're talking about now um i mean it probably cuts the audience when you take it from two years to seven days by like two thirds mm -hmm. which sucks yeah this is terrible yeah um and then the way around this is and this is getting very technical. The way around this is there's vendors that can help you and I'm going to give you a list of them. But what they are doing is they're basically helping the brand lay down their own first party cookie that mm -hmm. is not Clavio. It looks mm -hmm. like it's a name of brand. Dr. Mm -hmm. Squatch or True Classic Teas. It looks to Apple like it is a cookie that need that that True Classic needs to make their website function, mm -hmm. right? So, um, what I would say, so it works for sure. We do it, and I'll give you three other companies if you want to go check them out. We're probably don't even look at at us unless you're like five million in revenue or above. Mm -hmm. Elevar. Is a company that does this blotout.io black crow and us those are the four vendors that are in the market mm -hmm. we do some other stuff that none of those other vendors do so if you're above five million check us out i would say because i'm biased but these four vendors are all in the game of of doing this you know another way they refer to it as is server side tracking so like mm -hmm. there's like a client so, you know these pixels can be installed client side which is like in the browser, it basically sh in Google Tag Manager, it sort of like mm -hmm. shows up in the browser or they can be installed server side, which is like they get sort of deployed through the Shopify CDN, Content Distribution mm -hmm. Network. Anyway, mm -hmm. this is really hard to understand. When you listen to the sales pitches of all the brands, it's really hard mm -hmm. to understand. Right. If you ask any of the brands and they're the biggest brands in Shopify, what the heck these people are actually doing for them. Mm -hmm. Their answer is, I don't really know, but it's working. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling nice you the reason that it's working is this reason we described. It's because mm -hmm. they are a vehicle that is fighting against intelligent tracking prevention to extend your ability to follow your audience of visitors on your own website and track them over time. Yeah. So that that's the long and short of the message that I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know? good good stuff. I mean, it's very interesting. One of the things that kind of uh, came to my mind is that, I mean, 
Yeah, it, it's a huge difference. Going from two years to seven days to be being able to track only is, I mean, that's that's a big thing. But I, when you think about it, in a way, it is giving brands or, or um, in a way, lighting fire under brands because it's giving them more of a reason to control more of their customers' data, that first party data, um, and do alternate things that are not really reliant on these other platforms, these social platforms, these other marketing channels, um, and, and giving them more of that, the responsibility of being on, on, on their end and, and trying to find other solutions to get people within their funnel and move them along their funnel and, you know, do the retargeting and, and, um, you know, it, it is spurring more creativity. And then of course there's companies like you and the others that you mentioned that are, you know, have found out ways to, to navigate around it where you've got definitely a market now of customers that are, are trying to, um, to figure this out. And so it kind of brings me to my next question is, you know, as far as marketing strategies are concerned, if we're talking about marketing on, um, on Meta, Facebook, Instagram, and other platforms like that, how is this, how are their strategies going to need to change moving right. forward when they're talking, when we're talking about marketing on their platform, the, these platforms? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Cause I only basically address the email side because mm -hmm. that's where we have mostly existed until now. Yeah. Um, the same thing happens to the meta pixel. Okay. This is even worse because all these browsers know about meta and they love blocking meta. It's like their favorite thing to do. Mm -hmm. So meta did something to fight this. They created the C A the conversions API, the C API. Mm -hmm. So they created this ability for you to stream events directly from Shopify into meta. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a full-time developer, <laughs> you can do that, right? Like it, right. if you have, show me the D 2 C guy who's got the full-time developer. That's like, you know, somebody like us, they don't have, them. so, uh, all of these vendors, which I mentioned, in addition to the email side, they also have the ability with Google, Facebook, TikTok, whatever to stream these events directly from Shopify into the conversions API and augment or enhance the data that, that, that Meta is getting. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing about it. It's hard to measure the actual effect of it in Meta. The one thing they disclose, which is not super helpful, but it's something is they have this metric called event match quality score. If you Google this event match quality, you can read about it. Mm -hmm. If you have not done anything to make your event, ma event match quality score higher, if you log in there, your event match quality, or if you log in to where it tells you to log in to see what your event match quality is, it's probably low or medium. Mm -hmm. If you have already gone and used one of these tools, and I'm betting that some people are listening to this, they're like, oh yeah, like I already use Elevar. I don't know what they're doing, but like, you know, whatever it's. <laughs> <laughs> right, it works. You know, it's doing it, right? It's like doing this thing that I don't even understand. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you're, if you've solved the problem already, then your event match quality score is likely high. Mm -hmm. The vendors will tell you that it will probably lead to a 20 to 30% lift in your efficiency, right? And the reason why is because there's three components that go into an uh, into the your, your bid value, right? If you and me, if we both bid on ad placement as different brands, even at the same cash amount, mm -hmm. one of our bid values meta will calculate is substantially higher than the other one. Oh, wow. There's the cash component. There's your, uh, it's called like, it's something the effect of like how good the ad is or like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like how relevant is the ad to like the audience that you're trying to get. Mm -hmm. And then there's actually an audience, there, there's like a retargeting component of it, right? Mm -hmm. That if you can illuminate more audience for them to go to on the first tick, 
it will make the value of your bid be much higher to them and you'll right. win the you'll win the auction. So the vendors will tell you it's 20 to 30% lift. It's actually impossible to run an AB test st me streaming events in versus not because they just mm -hmm. go, it's one pipe in and then Meta's got it. And they don't allow you to say, well, let me just see if this is actually working. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's the same way with all the ad tech platforms. On the email side, it's different because you can literally like split out your abandoned cart flow and you can say, these are the events Clavio is getting without me. These are the events it's getting with me. Look, I'm making this 100% mm -hmm. better. On the okay. meta side, you can't gotcha. do it. So mm -hmm. so it's not, it's not like uh, a tactical change, like, oh, you should run your ads, you, you know, this way in this eco, in this world or whatever. It's just mm -hmm. like, you know, if you're beyond a certain point, and you have not investigated this type of thing, and you haven't like looked at your event match quality score like you should. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say for everybody. Like, check your event match quality score out. If it's not high, then mm -hmm. go down. <laughs> go down the road of trying to solve this problem. If it is high, then somebody on your team has probably done something about it already, gotcha, and they just gotcha. like didn't even try to explain it to you because they didn't understand what they were doing either. Hey there, fellow entrepreneurs and B2B marketers. Before we dive back into the conversation, let me introduce you to a game changer in the lead generation arena, Lead Feeder. Now, we all know the struggle of identifying those elusive website visitors and turning them into valuable leads. But what if I told you there's a tool that not only promises, but delivers on supercharging your lead generation and sales efforts? Enter Lead Feeder. Imagine having the power to identify companies visiting your website, track their behavior in real time, and seamlessly integrate it all with your CRM. Lead Feeder is not just a tool, it's your secret weapon for efficient and targeted lead engagement. What sets Lead Feeder apart? It's the ability to provide detailed insights into customer behavior helping your sales team prioritize efforts and close deals faster. With customizable notifications, lead scoring, and GDPR compliance, Lead Feeder is changing the game. Ready to revolutionize your approach to leads and deals? Head over to leadfeeder.com for your free demo today. That's L-E-A-D-F-E-E-D-E-R.com. Don't miss out on the future of successful lead generation with Lead Feeder. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, interesting. Now, what I'm wondering is, you know, we, we've seen, of course, this shift Apple has made. And, you know, of course, a lot of these other uh, platforms are, are making similar changes um, with respect to, you know, the, this limiting of tracking and, you know, trying to be on the side of the customer. But where where do you kind of see this actually going as far as you know we're down to like seven days and then is, is it do you feel that this is eventually going to are they going to just put up a wall at some point and and, and not allow it and then if that's the case are there going to only be the options that you're talking about through you know companies like you or are we going to be are they a brand's going to be totally kind of shut out I mean, look, they could start doing stuff to affect what we're doing too, you know? Uh, yeah. I I don't know. I can tell you the direction it's going. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. they're not reversing any of these changes. True. <laughs> and like the, the future updates, it will be like, you know, I don't even know what the correct visualization is, but like mm -hmm. tiny little movements that are in the same direction that they've already been moving in. Right. Yeah, yeah. It is movements toward anonymity and inability to track in general. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, it's a cat and mouse game, right? Like there's, mm -hmm. there's going to be that. So, so, so like Norton antivirus exists because windows put out a new version every three or four years. And there were, a bajillion bugs in it, right? So like, <laughs> right, right. you know, it's like, I interpret our role in the ecosystem as, okay, somebody is crushing your ability to track 
and that mm. is causing a huge amount of economic damage to the ecosystem. Yeah. Of course, there is going to be incentive to try to create products to offset that somehow, mm. right? So like, I kind of just view it as a cat and mouse game and, yeah, you know, hopefully for everything that they do, you know, there's so much incentive to create ways around it that like we just keep doing that and it's sort of yeah. this thing that we're just constantly commenting on it's like oh we had to build this because of this that and that you know mm -hmm. um that's why i hope happens yeah yeah I, I hope so too for sure and you know as we said they're going on a path where yeah of course they're they're not going to reverse it we're gonna right. it's gonna keep going <laughs> yeah. more more and more and more to the point where they're not going to allow really any any type of tracking and so with all of that in mind and all of these strategic shifts that apple's making and these other companies are making we're looking at maybe just some some practical things that an e-commerce brand can do to you know make keep m maintaining these mark you know their 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 typical marketing campaigns what what would you say are some you know just practical tangible things that they can do with all of this in mind that where they yeah, can kind if, of keep things going. If you're asking me for like lowest hanging fruit, yeah, I'm going to tell you, man, build up your opt-in email and SMS list mm -hmm. with the best practice. Search best practices for collecting emails and SMS. I got you. That is worth investing time in. Okay. In my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like you own that information even beyond the sort of like the stuff I was talking about earlier, mm -hmm. it's kind of like running this pool for you that you sort of own, but still you're kind of like activating on other platforms or whatever. Yeah, like if you, true. you know, learn how to get better at collecting emails and learn how to use SMS to make money in an e-commerce store, like mm -hmm. that to me is like the most, and I just see the value of those two channels mm -hmm. going up over time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can definitely you know I mean? see that for sure. You know, at, for a time when SMS was really kind of just getting booming and text messaging was a huge thing, you know, the, the shift was that way. And then email people were like, oh, okay, what's well, going to be the future of email. But at this point, yeah, I mean, I think they're both, like you said, it's almost kind of neck and neck, the value of having your direct customers emails and their their, their their mobile numbers to be able to directly reach them. Yeah, I think that's you're right. It's going to be more important than ever uh, yeah. to have that to be able to maintain the relationship that way. And maybe you maybe know it WhatsApp, is. Or well, maybe WhatsApp becomes a channel, but that's like basically true. the same thing as SMS, right? Like yeah, you, you yeah. Have to collect is. a phone mm -hmm. number for someone who gives it to you. Yeah, they're, it, they're not going to let you spam on that thing, right? Yeah, like, no it, it, exactly, exactly. Um, um, yeah, with SMS though, you know, there, there still are a few challenges with that. I've worked with some other brands that have tried to go down that route, um, managing large SMS campaigns. And, you know, of course here in the U S there's, you know, regulations as far as what you can, and you can't do. And yeah, you gotta you know, be you buttoned gotta, up. Yeah, exactly. You, you, um, you know, if you're going to be on the providers that are allowing you to do the SMSs, like the Twilio's of the world and some of those other providers. Yeah, you, you gotta abide by the rules because if you're just gonna blanket, you know, blast out different campaigns that are unsolicited, you could definitely get into trouble and then, you know, you're not gonna be able to do it. So it's, um, you know, it, it's, it, 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 it's not, you know, easy as one, two, three, but you, you can do it, but you definitely gotta play by the rules for now. One other thing that I was kind of thinking about, and you may, maybe can answer this, when I thought back to these regulations that they have now with SMS, it kind of reminded me of, you know, 10 or so years ago when the whole Can Spam Act was a, the huge thing and you couldn't send unsolicited emails and that was really the big thing. Now, it seems like they've kind of pulled back on it. I mean, these days, you know, I'm getting, you know, a ton of uh, outreach messages, of course, unsolicited. And it just seems like brands are just kind of flying free now. Do you think that's going to be the same way eventually with SMS? So the law on SMS mm -hmm. is very different. Yeah. It's double opt-in. Mm -hmm. and the carriers actually enforce it right whereas right. the law on the email side isn't even opt-in at all 
Yeah. And like, like Clavio enforces it to the degree that you have tripped their one in a thousand spam rate threshold, or they can identify something else about your email program mm -hmm. that is obviously subpar. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more like in terms of email, the entire enforcement mechanism is like on very large aggregate numbers. Yeah. Cause that's kind of the only way you could do it. And mm -hmm. if your aggregate numbers look like shit, then the way you're getting emails is wrong. That's kind of mm -hmm. what it comes down to, right? You're not, you're not being clear. If you're capturing consent at all, it's not clear about what they're signing up for. That's mm -hmm. basically what it is. And if you're not yeah. capturing consent, they're going to tell you you need to. And if you are, then they're going to tell you that it's not clear what they're signing up for. Yeah. You yeah. know, on the SMS side, it's like, you know, it, they take the, those complaints seriously, right? Yeah, like a few right. complaints and it can totally like you're shut down, you know, yeah. cause they're so protective of that inbox. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, the one exception, which we'll see what happens this election cycle is, is political campaigns are actually exempt from mm. the consumer SMS marketing laws. Wow. So that's why you get all this, like, you know, so-and-so candidate and like wherever, like needs your, you know, $3 or whatever, <laughs> right, um, right. you know, yeah. so, so yeah, I don't yeah, think it's I, ever going to get, I don't think it's ever going to get like email mm -hmm. for that reason. Yeah. 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 That, that makes sense. Yeah. I, I can understand that the fact that you're, they're tied into the cell providers um, and it goes through them. It's a little different than with the email with email. We're only dealing with hosting providers, SMTP platforms, and you know, there's a million of those. And these days, of course, there's only a handful of, of major cell providers that are kind of controlling that whole space. And so, yeah, I, I can, I can see how, yeah, they're going to, they're going to keep things tight. And they're, if you, if you, if you break those regulations, yeah, they're going to, they're going to shut you down. Yeah. So I, I can definitely see um, how it's not going to be wide open like email is now. Well, um, Adam, as we get ready to, to wrap things up, um, aside from, you know, some of the low hanging fruit that you talked about as far as SMS, capturing emails directly, what are some um, other things that brands um, that have just become aware of all of these changes, what are some first steps that you think they should take to, you know, adapt their marketing strategies overall so that they're more effective? Well, the thing that I think is, it's not necessarily directly related to this, but kind of. So a thing that I see a lot is a lot of these brands use Clavio. you know, mm -hmm. you set up your Clavio account and when you set it up, it requires you to create what they call an abandoned cart flow. Mm -hmm. When you create your account, most brands are like, great, I have an abandoned cart flow. That's what I needed. Now I'm going to just right. like go about my day, send newsletters once a week or whatever. That's actually not an abandoned cart flow. Mm. It's an abandoned checkout flow. Okay. Meaning if that is the only thing you've set up, if someone puts something in their cart and they leave, unless they make it to the checkout page, they don't actually get an email when that happens. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So the one thing that I would recommend to everybody listening to this is go into your Clavio account and see if you have created an add to cart flow yet. I got Cause you. that's Clavio lingo mm -hmm. for the most lucrative email that exists in the history of the world, which yeah. is sending someone an email when they add something to the cart and they leave. Yeah. So yeah. that is, that is like always my biggest advice. It's like, there's like a, a naming convention problem out there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why those guys chose abandoned cart <laughs> for that, but yeah. they did. Yeah. And it's just, it's just left a lot of low hanging fruit, you know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good tip. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that because yeah, I, I can see how a brand, like you said, they go through that. They say, okay, abandoned cart flow. I'm good. I'm good to go. But that, Done. yeah, yeah. People, <laughs> that's a big difference from having items in the cart 
versus going all the way to checkout and then totally. you know, kind of jumping out. Yeah. That's a huge, that's a huge difference. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of two different things. So yeah, good to know. Good to know. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Well, yeah, this is uh we're kind of at some interesting times, Adam. This has been an awesome conversation. You know, was, these um, things are going to steadily change. It's going to be interesting how things go. Cause like we said, they're not going to reverse any of this stuff. Um, and yeah, I think it just keeps brands a little bit more on their toes. Um, and it just goes to show that you really, but the, at the end of the day, you've got to control your customers data, uh, that customer data form that relationship with them directly. And, um, and, you know, to really, to be able to, to get around what, um, some of these companies like Apple are doing. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, um, this, I guess you could say kind of like, a or early warning them reducing the tracking from two years to seven years. It's just, uh, you know, got to really got to be cognizant of what's going to be coming down the, down the pipe. Yes, sir. Um, well, uh, you know, it's been a great conversation. I always like to, uh, you know, of course, switch gears here, as you know, from the first time you were on, um, wanted to see if you could share one closing fun fact, um, uh, maybe something different than, uh, when you were last on and something that maybe you're into that you think we would be interested to know. So I already get to know you a little better. I'm into, <laughs> I'm into my six pound Chihuini. All right. Ch awesome. Ch Ch Chihuahua and wiener dog. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that was a mix. Okay. Yeah, awesome. She's, she's three years old and okay. uh, she just kind of sits on my couch and okay. watches me work all day. <laughs> awesome. Well, good. Yeah. It seems like a very low maintenance dog for sure. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's awesome. She's watching a car pull out of the parking lot right now, which she's not happy about. She, <laughs> gotcha. she does not like when things, when environments change. Right. Right. Steady state <laughs> is, the, is the state for her. <laughs> gotcha gotcha yeah she's not phased by the camera at all she's not even looking really right, right. Exactly. well now she's looking <laughs> well good stuff yeah thank you for sharing that that's just like an awesome dog there uh but yeah lastly before we do let you go adam what uh, if anybody wants to reach out and pick your brain anymore about um you know anything that we discussed or any marketing strategies what's the best way for them to get a hold of you sure either email me at adam at retention.com or hit me up on linkedin uh, retention okay. Adams, my handle. I do a bunch of posting on LinkedIn, as we said in the intro. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we'll be sure to have the link to your website in our show notes and definitely recommend people to, to check you out on LinkedIn and, and hit you up there. Well, uh, it's been great talking to you, Adam. Really appreciate having you on again on the e-commerce marketing podcast. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce marketing podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and share it with everyone you know. Are you looking to take your digital marketing to the next level but are tired of weeding through countless YouTube videos with unproven and untrusted marketing strategies? Well, we have the answer for you. The More Sales Every Month Online Digital Marketing Course. In this information-packed course, you will learn effective keyword research, link building, content marketing, and much more to attract and convert your site visitors into paying customers. Just go to moresaleseverymonth.com and sign up today for a low one-time fee. In addition to this power-packed course, if you would like to get access to a growing repository of digital marketing articles, PDFs, and eBooks, check out getosi.com resources and opt in to get full access to our library of priceless marketing information to help you take your digital marketing to the next level.